Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way through the captain's quarters. We found a dead man who the mastermind behind all of this is trying to make us think is Zero, but it just seems a bit too obvious. Pretty much everyone is convinced that uh, Zero is someone else somewhere on the ship. Some people believe that Zero is one of us, like one of the main cast members, while others believe that he's a separate person entirely. So, without further ado, let's get back into this. They stepped out of the captain's quarters and into another hallway. The hallway stretched out in front of Junpei for a bit, before turning left like a great backward L. Junpei rounded the corner and took off down the street away. He ran and ran, and ran. The end of the hallway was a door. He made straight for it. He was nearly halfway to it when he noticed a piece of paper in the middle of the floor. What was a piece of paper doing in the middle of a hallway? Junpei skidded to a halt. He dropped down to his hands and knees and quickly tore the paper off the floor. Now that he had a chance to examine it more closely, it was clear that it was a map. More specifically, a map of the ship's interior for the ADAC. <sighs> What's wrong? Ace, slightly slower by virtue of his advanced age, had finally caught up to Junpei. I bit my tongue. Junpei said nothing, simply showed Ace what he had found. He looked at it long enough to determine what it was and nodded. I see. With, th with that, he began running again past Junpei. Junpei shoved the map into his pocket and got up to follow Ace, but something stopped him. Hey, where's Clover? He turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. Damn it, what the hell is she up to? Junpei muttered angrily under his breath and took off back the way he'd come. As he stopped around the corner, he saw her. She was standing in front of the door to the captain's quarters, her hand on the doorknob. As Junpei watched, she closed it gently and quietly. The hell are you doing? Nothing? What do you mean, nothing? Clover had unconsciously put her hands over the pockets of her jacket, as if trying to hide something. The hell's that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... Hmm, I wonder. What the hell? Come on, we gotta hurry. With that, Clover ran, straight past the somewhat confused Junpei. As she did, he caught a glimpse of her back. Sticking up from her collar was something that looked like a big wooden stick. Hey, Clover! What the hell's that thing on your back? She didn't respond. Instead, she quickly turned the corner and disappeared. Junpei did his best to convince himself that it would make sense later, and ran off after Clover. Junpei pushed through the door and found himself in a large room with a large set of stairs. It was just what he expected to see after reading the map. His I see after reading the map himself meant that Ace had probably realized the same thing. Junpei looked around, but Ace was nowhere to be seen. He put his hand on the handrail and leaned over to look down. There he was. Not just Ace, Santa, June, Seven, and Lotus as well. Jinping and Clover glanced at each other and hurried down the stairs. They reached B-Deck at the same time. Jumpy! Clover! June's face was excited. Something had happened. That much Junpei could tell by simply looking at her. What's up? Given their situation, he was not inclined to be excited about sudden developments. June, however, couldn't contain herself. We found it! Found what? We found it! What did you find? The last door! We found door 9! What? Come on, just follow us. We'll explain on the way. Uh, okay, let's go. Seven turned and jogged off down the stairs. The rest followed. We finally made it. The relief and excitement in her voice echoed what each one of them felt. Yeah, it's finally time. Junpei wasn't quite ready to believe they'd really done it, at least not just yet. Still, if everyone said that it was door nine, then it probably was. He could feel his heart racing. A mixture of anticipation and fear ran through his veins, and he could feel his legs shaking. 
He was doing his best to maintain a sense of healthy skepticism, but he couldn't deny that the prospect of escape was an exciting one. There was one thing that he couldn't get off his mind. The numbered door could only accommodate between three and five people. There were seven of them on the way to door nine. That meant that even in the best case scenario, there would be two of them who would, who would have to stay behind. Two people. He didn't have any solutions to that problem yet, but he was desperately hoping one would present itself. Junpei looked over at the clock. The hands indicated that it was 4.30. They had 90 minutes before their time was up. Hey! Junpei! Jun! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Santa's voice jolted Junpei out of his reverie. Let's go, Jumpy! Jun took off down the stairs, jogging as quickly as she could. Junpei followed. They were quiet for a while until... They had just reached Sea Deck when Clover spoke. Hey, what about door two? Everyone else stopped. They all turned to look at Clover. Seven spoke. What about door two? Door two is the only one we didn't... We haven't gone through it, I mean. Uh, yes, that is true. Are you guys okay with that? Not investigating it, I mean. So what? We found door nine. We don't need any of the other doors. What's the point? What's the point in going to door 9? We can't all go through it, can we? Then we should do what we have to do before we go any further. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. The best way to finish it quickly is to do the border pieces first. You know? Or what? Think all seven of us should go into door 9? And then we argue over who stays behind and gets to go? Do we really want to do that again? Who knows? If we check out door two, maybe we'll find something. Maybe we can find a way to get all of us out. I don't know what might be in there. We might not find anything. But don't you think it'd be better to at least have a look? I mean, am I wrong? Does that sound wrong to you guys? Yeah, you do have a point. The other's not in an agreement. Last time I checked the clock, it was 4.30. It's not like we've got a lot of time, but if we're, good, if we're quick about it, we might have time to take a look. You're right. Let's go take a look at door two. They were back in front of the elevator. Nearby was a large hospital room. The elevator could take them down to door two. After a few minutes of discussion, they decided that Clover, Santa, June, and Seven would go. 4 plus 3 plus 6 plus 7 equals 20, 2 plus 0 equals 2. Alright, let's get going. I'll see you later. Okay, be careful. They climbed into the elevator and Junpei listened to it creak and rattle its way to the bottom deck. Only Junpei, Ace, and Lotus were left. As the elevator rumbled out of sight, Ace spoke. Lotus, would you be so kind as to go with me? Go with you? I didn't think that people still talked that way outside the 1950s. Well, I'm a mother. Would that be a problem for you? Uh, uh that, was a, that wasn't what I meant to... I was hoping you would come with me. <laughs> Seriously, though, I was kidding. So, where was it you wanted to take me? There's something I wanted to show you. Hey man, what the hell? I'm not important enough? Well, it's not like that. Once I've shown Lotus, I'll show you. Really? Of course. Ace's smile was friendly. Fine. Do whatever you want. Thank you. Are you coming are you coming, Lotus? Fine. It doesn't look like they're going to be back anytime soon. I might as well go see whatever it is you think is so important. Thank you. Well then. Shall we go? Ace turned and began to walk. Lotus followed. They disappeared into the hallway on the left. Jinpei wasn't sure how long they'd been gone when the elevator suddenly opened. A single person stood there. Clover. 
She looked at Junpei, then slowly, purposely stepped out of the elevator. The door closed behind her. Where's everybody else? What happened? She didn't answer. Instead, her eyes swept the room and then settled on Junpei. Where are Ace and Lotus? Junpei explained what had happened. Oh. Then they went over there? Her voice was small and timid. Yeah, I think so. He repeated his earlier question. So, where are June and Santa and Seven? Why aren't they with you? You really want to know? There was something almost wrong with her smile. Y yeah. Okay. Sure. Here. Let me show you. Clover pulled something out of her pocket and tossed it onto the floor at Junpei's feet. He looked down. On the floor in front of him were three metal rings. Bracelets. Oh my god! Oh, holy shit! Junpei collapsed. No! No way! This has got to be some kind of joke! This... This can't be real! Junpei's body felt like rubber. His heart felt like a cold lump in his chest, and his hands shook uncontrollably. Sweat poured down his face. The three bracelets sat there on the floor before him. You could see the numbers on their faces. Three, seven, and six. Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from the ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship or detects that its wearer's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. But... why? Junpei's voice was flat and broken. Clover's response was cold. Revenge. For my brother. He was forced into door three and murdered. You need at least three people to open a door. Who were the two that opened the door with him? It could only have been Santa and Seven. That's why I killed them. Two plus three plus seven equals twelve. One plus two equals three. But... Why... Why did you kill June? Because she tried to protect them. She was in my way. She had to die too. No. No! Junpei shook his head, trying desperately to wake himself from what had to be a dream. It couldn't be real. It just couldn't. Hey, Junpei. He felt Clover's hand on his shoulder. Her smile was wrong. Horribly wrong. Her face looked like a mask made from stretched human skin. The smile that parted her lips did not extend to her eyes. They were dead and empty. The girl in front of him was no longer the Clover he had known. Perhaps she was not even human. Let's go. Her hand reached out toward him. Let's get out of here. Let's leave the ship. <sighs> what the hell are you talking about? To... To open a number door. Yes, I know. You need at least three people. But as long as we have this... Once again, Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. It was another bracelet. Junpei could see the number on the face. Zero. Zero. You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... See? You get it now? If we have the Zero Bracelet, we can leave! You and I can open door 9 with just the two of us. 4 plus 5 plus 0 equals 9. See? So let's go! Come on! Hurry up! She shoved out her hand again. Junpei looked up at Clover. She had the face of a demon. But there was... something else. There was a holy light that surrounded her. She was both a fierce god and a benevolent goddess filled with love. Junpei? Her voice was soft. Her eyes weren't empty anymore. They were deep. 
So deep, Junpei could feel himself falling into them. He felt dizzy. There was something oddly bewitching about her. His mind was beginning to crack and his heart began to melt. Junpei? The hand she was offering him looked so soft, so inviting. Junpei reached out with his own trembling hand and closed it over hers. Junpei writhed in agony, he shuddered and twitched, his body spasming as he went into shock. He screamed until his throat was torn and bloody, then screamed some more. His cries echoed across the room. Eventually, his movement slowed, then faded. There was no more strength left in Junpei. He could feel his body begin to no go numb. He no longer felt pain. He no longer felt anything. Whatever Junpei had been was gone. The last remnants of his mind began to fade. Even as his vision faded to nothingness, he saw Clover. Thanks, Junpei. I'm just gonna borrow this, Kay. Her smile was cold. What was left of Junpei's conscious mind drifted away. All that was left was a twisted, broken corpse. <laughs>